today I would like to talk about the uh, buck converter basics. So basically uh, we will talk about the DC-DC converters and there are different types of DC-DC converters. Those DC-DC converters can be used to step down the input voltage so you can have a higher voltage at the input and you can have a lower voltage at the output. Or you can use them to step up the input voltage so you can generate for example if you have a 5 voltage input uh, source maybe you can generate 12 volts at the output. Or there are converters which are you know both stepping down or stepping up the input voltage. Today uh, we will talk about the uh, simplest uh, case of those converters, a buck converter. So here basically you see a uh, DC-DC converter. So here this is basically a switch and this is basically a resistive load. And here we have the input voltage and in this case we have the output voltage. So basically what's happening is when I turn off that, uh, sorry, when I turn on that switch I will have a, so here, so this is our output voltage VO, okay, so I will see, VO, I will see VD voltage here when the switch is on. Okay, then if I just make that off, so that thing is now connected to the ground and I will see a zero voltage. So basically, as here you can generate a square form and let's call that period, this is the off period, and let's define all that thing as my PS sampling uh, switching period. So this is my period and that thing is repeating each after another. So here let's call that time on time as D time TS. D is my uh, duty cycle. Now of course if this is my uh, total period and if this is duty cycle and that is uh, 1 minus d time ts. So 1 minus d times ts is the off period and d time ts is the on period. So now basically you can see by adjusting how long the switch is going to stay at the on position, I can control the magnitude of output voltage. But actually, uh, this is kind of rubbish. I mean, either you have a full voltage or zero voltage. So let's try to uh, smooth that thing. Okay, so you can see the same waveform here. So let's make the output voltage smoother. So what we can do here is we can put a LC filter, so it is like a low pass filter as you know, so we will try to smooth that voltage. So I don't want to get you know, that kind of uh, square waveform with VD and zero voltage, but I would like to get a more continuous voltage. So for that purpose I use a capacitor in parallel and I use a series inductor. So let's have a look at that one. But before that, uh, just as a reminder, uh, this is a frequency characteristics of a LC filter. So basically if the frequency is low, so you have a high gain, so basically it is better at transmitting the lower frequency components, so that is why we call it a low pass filter. And as the frequency gets higher, uh, basically the gain gets smaller and smaller, so you get rid of the higher frequency components. And of course if the quality factor is higher, then you can have some ripple components, but we will talk about that in the following weeks. So here, so we have the low pass filter, but there's an interesting component as well. We have a diode here. So why do we need a diode there? So let me try to redraw uh, that circuit.
Okay, this is my, let's do not. So, if we don't have that diode, the problem is when that switch is at on position, so basically my current is flowing through here, so basically I have an inductor current, but then if we don't have any diode, if we, let's say, cut that thing, okay, so we don't have the diode now. So basically, when the inductor is conducting, then I will try to turn it off the uh, switch. So basically, I know uh, the voltage of an inductor is L di over dt, and basically, if you want to get that current to really small voltages, like in instantaneously, like in this case, so basically VL will go, assuming this is an ideal switch, basically VL will go to infinity. So basically you will either create a spark here, and if it is a MOSFET or a semiconductor, you will blow it not from the overcurrent, but because of the over voltage in that MOSFET. And actually this is uh, a really interesting feature. Let's say you come back from your uh, school, you went to your home and you smell some gas, but you already turn on the light. Okay, so you just realize you forgot the oven and there's gas everywhere and you just, you know, turn on the light. What would you do? So normally people say, okay, turn off all the electricity, blah, blah, but it is not the case. If you already turn on the lights and if it is not exploded yet, basically turning off light will have the same effect because basically our lights are working as an inductor and you can think that part as, a, uh, as your switch. So basically the spark, you know, the spark during the turn off in that case will uh, cause the gas to explode. So the explosion will occur if you just turn off the switch. So if you have uh, if you get into a room with gas leakage and if you already turn on the lights, then please do not turn them off, keep them on. So it's the same theory here. So basically that diode here is doing like that current would like to flow through some part. So basically whenever we turned off that switch, so we create an alternating path for the current to flow so that inductor will be happy so we will have a current flowing in this region so we will call that diode and that region the freewheeling diode or freewheeling region okay so now let's look at the uh, characteristics of that one so basically let's uh, now have a look at the inductor currents. Okay, so this is the current in this case. So, and I will also plot the inductor current and I will also plot the inductor voltage. So basically I'm talking about uh, VL as the inductor voltage here. So when the switch is on, so basically when the switch is on, so basically that diode, uh, sorry, that uh, inductor is connected through that VD, and this was, remember, the output voltage. So basically the voltage difference is VD, VD minus VO. So I will have a voltage, and this will be VD minus VO. Okay, and I know if I apply a positive voltage, so I'm applying, to remember, this is a buck converter, and I will have a higher voltage at the input. So basically, I'm applying a positive voltage to the inductor, and you can see from this equation, if the voltage is positive, then the derivative of the current will have to be positive. So that means the current will increase linearly. So let's assume I have uh, some initial current, so I will keep my inductor current increasing with that positive voltage. So now, this was the uh, DTS, so this is uh, on time, okay? So now, let's say I turned on, turned off my switch. So now I cut my switch, so there is no voltage coming 
down from the uh, input side. So suddenly, you know, because that current has to flow somewhere and the diode gets into the conduction and it is flowing like that. So when it is flowing like that, what is the voltage at the inductor? So now one side of the inductor is connected to here and if that diode is in conduction, so basically you can assume it is a short circuit. So basically one side of the inductor is connected to the V output voltage and other side is connected to the ground. So basically the voltage in the inductor is minus, minus VD, sorry VO. Okay, so I will have a minus VO case. Okay, so in that region, so now we have the basically applied voltage is negative. So that means derivative is going to be negative. So the current will decrease linearly. Okay, and if it is going to be at the steady state, then that means that is going to repeat. So I have to end at the same point. So basically my inductor voltage is positive when it is on and negative when the switch is off. And when it is on, my inductor is charging up. And when it is negative, the inductor uh, current goes down. And since I know, since I know if we started at the same point and at the same, uh, uh, and at the same point, so basically that means it is under steady state and I can calculate, you know, let's call these regions as A and B. Okay, I know uh, from the voltage balance equation these two regions have to be equal to each other. So let's uh, try to calculate that one. So basically this is Vd minus Vo, okay, times uh, Dts is equal to, okay, you can either uh, take them equal and, you know, get rid of that one or you can add them as the actual values and make it zero. So I will use the other one. So let's say VO 1 minus D times TS. Okay. So let's uh, calculate that one. So I can get rid of uh, these equations. So let me write that one. VD times D minus VO times D is equal to VO minus VO times D. So here clearly you can see uh, this two components will cancel each other. So basically that one and that one will cancel each other. So I found an important equation Vd times D. So basically that means output voltage is proportional to our duty cycle. If I keep the duty cycle higher and higher, I can get an output voltage equal to input voltage at most. So I can make the duty cycle, I mean you can push it up to here. So D is, you know, always less than one and larger than zero. So if you push it up to that border, that means I will have a input vo output voltage equal to input voltage. I mean, that makes sense because you just keep this at on position and output is uh, connected to input voltage. However, if I just make it like 50% on 50% off, that means I will have half of my input voltage. And if you just look at that one, we will investigate it in the following weeks. Because of that capacitor, now my output voltage is much smoother. So it will probably go like in small ripples like that. So it is a much better voltage characteristics compared to that one. So basically I put the capacitor and the inductor to smooth out the voltage. And actually I included another uh, diode just to keep the free wheeling mode over that inductor current. So that is the simplest case uh, for our uh, buck converter. And we will see the boost converter and buck boost converter in the following lectures.